This is a presentation on how to build a free target competition kit. This is a box, how the kit comes pre-assembled. It has a very small content uh, paper. And then inside you can find the, the parts. These are the target frame and target holder. Screws and other small parts. The paper motor already assembled with it uh, guide rollers other uh, wooden parts the box side panels This is the back plate with the mounting points already put in. And this is the front plate. Two put a paper holder, they are just two small wooden uh, parts that you have to glue and then uh, put into place, you have to push a little hard the cutout is already there and then with the supplied uh, L shape make sure it's vertical same job on the other part put glue not too much and then push it in the already cut part already cut hole make sure it's vertical These are the sensors and the other parts in the back. You have to put two screws in the provided holes and then put the screws in the pillars already mounted on the back plate. Make sure that you don't put too much stress on the, on the circuit board and just push the, the screws in the holes in the pillar and then uh, put the nut on the back and tighten it but not too much the package there are two 3D printed uh, plastic covers that uh, provide protection for the bottom sensors 
saw that uh, the debris from the, the paper don't clog up the circuit board. So put the screws first on in the in the plastic cover, then put the screws through the circuit board of the sensor, and then mount it on the pillar. This is how it should look with all four sensors mounted. Next is the paper motor. It should already be, already be assembled. You just need to screw it in on the back plate. Just make sure that uh, you align the holes in the back plate put the screw in and then just uh, tighten it so it, it fastens in the holes already put in the paper motor base. Next is the circuit board. We will use four screws as guide guide rods for the board. Just push the, the screws through the holes in the back plate. And then put uh, a nut on each one as spacer. And, uh, holder for the, the screw in place, the board will come on top of it. Now the circuit board will slide on the four screws. It has uh, four holes in each corner. Just make sure you push it down gently and evenly so not to bend the, the board. Next are two cable guides that uh, are mounted on the, on the sides of the central hole. Just glue them in. These will keep the cables in one place. Next is the mounting of the side panels. You have to put the screws in all the side holes and then put the nuts in but do not tighten them. Just in the, leave them in the middle of the screw. Repeat this for all these holes in the back plate and also on the side panels. This is how it should look at the end. The screws with the nuts on the back plate and the side panels. Now to mount uh, one of the side panels, just line up the already pre-cut holes and then move the nut up and down so it matches the, the hole already cut in there at the precise height and then push the, the side panel into the back plate you may need to use a little force here once the side panel is slid into place tighten the screws so that the side panel is secured. Do the same with the other side 
panel, top and bottom panels. Of course, use a hammer to put it in place and then tighten the screws. This is how it should look with all the side panels in place. Next are the multifunction buttons. You just have to push the small wooden part into the already cut hole. Just press it in by hand. Next is the cabling. First, just uh, pass the, the motor power cable through the guide, the cable guide, then the buttons cable through the cable guide and connect it to the board. Next is the multi-wire sensor ribbon. The first part goes into the circuit board. It can only go in one position, so don't worry. Then it's the north sensor, the first uh, connector on the ribbon. Then you have to pass the whole ribbon through the square cable guide. The west sensor, the south sensor, and then again pass the rest of the ribbon through the cable guide. And lastly, put the last connector on the east sensor. There will be one connector unused for the face sensor. Next is the target face. It's the part where the, the paper mask and the witness paper will draw on. First, on the metal face, we have to mount the black paper roll guide. Then on the target holder, you have to clean the remains of the 3D printing so that the black paper roll can pass through that small hole. Then put the screws in the holes. The holes are a little tight from the 3D printing process, so you may need to screw it instead of pushing it. And then we need to fix the holder to the target face. Put the screws through the holes. Again, you need to screw it in, even though there is no thread, just so that the, the screw passes through. And then use nuts to secure the paper mask holder to the metallic target face. Then you need to pull the big four screws out of the pillars. and then mount the target face on the pillars. Line up the holes 
and put the big screws back in. Cover the two screws with the small plastic stubs. The stubs are needed to hold the paper mask in place. Next is the lead strip holder. There are four bars four wooden bars that need to be glued in on the front uh, plate. These will hold the lead strip. This is how it looks after the LED strip has been mounted. The strip should have some uh, glue on the back. Just cut it to length and let it uh, stick to the sides of the holders. And of course you need uh, some wire from the LED strip to the circuit board. Cut the wire to the appropriate length and insert it into these two holes, securing it with the screws. Also you need to provide your own power supply that need to be screwed in into the same place in the circuit board. This is how it looks when it's powered up. LED strip lights up and the blinking LED assures that the circuit board is in operation. 